All right, guys, Jack here, JBF Music and Guitar Lessons. And what I've got for you today is the analysis segment of my uh, reaction to Hanabi. So if you just want the straight reaction, you can get out with the eye there. This is the one where I'm going to just pause and deconstruct stuff. I'm going to try and be a bit less theory driven, a bit less guitar focused, a bit more and not quite as technical and more about the overall uh, song. There is a ton going on in this one, so it might end up being a horrendously long video for what is three minutes 40 of, <laughs> of music. But we'll see how long I can go on for. I might have to set myself a, a challenge to see if I can ramble on for like 45 minutes. That is, future me will resent past me for talking so long because I'll be grueling to edit. <laughs> Obligatory warnings done. Let's hop into it. So from the get go, there is a weird sound in the right speaker that I honestly am not I'm sure what it is. Brr. Sliding up maybe. Something like that with potentially a bit of like uh, slap back delay or flanger on it, which are effects. So it's a slide with some sort of effect on it. What the effect is, I don't know. Is there a count in there as well? Yep. You can hear the, you can hear uh, hitting the sticks together to count in as well. I'm not too sure if they're in, if that is a count in or if they've just put it in over the top because it sounds a slightly different tempo to the rest of the song. But then we are into into the actual song, so let's see what we've got going on here. Right, okay, so you've got some big octaves going on. There's a drum beat that I love. So you've got basically the kick doing that kind of doom to doom and the snare is that kind of cracking one. Uh, well, it's Lights Out by UFO. I think this is that was the first time I heard this drum beat and I've just, I've been in love with it ever since. It's superb, right? So it's just a kind of a big, simple melody. Do, 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 that the guitars are doing here. And then a really spicy note that you would not expect to hear there. It's a spicy note. Right. What's going on there? Right, cool, so... Um, using... It's not too... Too spicy note, it comes from a scale called the harmonic minor, which is a, a classical sounding scale. So that's probably why when you hear it, you go, ooh, but it's not like, ooh, <laughs> that's the only way I can describe it. Hopefully <laughs> that's made sense. Cool, and then to make things more interesting, instead of just playing the same melody, they've got some leads going on here. So there's this kind of do 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 thing going on on the left. Oh, it's panned to both. That leads in both of them. Okay, but on top of the octaves, which is kind of the melody, I don't know, kind of lead line, instead of just having that as the only lead line, they've started adding in this other stuff. And it's, it's, they do this all the time, but it's a great songwriting technique. Instead of just repeating the same section, we add something new in. So a lot of the time you might get a verse done one way when you know, then it goes pre-chorus, chorus, and then when the verse comes in again, there's something added. But here, instead of waiting to repeat it later on in the song, they've just gone, okay, we'll just add something new and now. Bass just holding down the fort, really. And then here, as ever, there's always kind of cool stuff going on. So pause, drum fill, and then some vocals. And the drum fill kind of helps uh, the quite abrupt uh, change in kind of feel because there's these kind of uh, chugging palm muted chords. So when I say chugging and palm muted palm mutants when you put your arm on the strings and mute them, so you get a more choked sound without it. More open. And the kind of harder you palm mute, the more more of a kind of sluggish, kind of grungy sound you can get. A bit, bit more metal as well, like um, Scott Ian from Anthrax. He's like kind of the godfather of modern palm meeting, I think. So the, the guitars are keeping it really simple here. The drums are doing something a bit weird if you listen to them. 
did it did it did it almost um she's it almost sounds like kind of uh, stumbling over yourself when you're walking uh, but the rest of it is together enough and familiar enough that we kind of recognize oh this is a drum beat then there's just a little bit of weirdness that you go oh what's going on there it's a bit like with the melody how they had that one kind of out note and the rest of it was all just really quite consonant <laughs> Yeah, so it sounds like you'd, you'd need to ask a drummer exactly what's going on there because I'm not good enough to be able to break that down. But it sounds like she's using kind kind of weird dotted notes or potentially like an almost polyrhythm type thing going on. Polyrhythm just being two different meters at the same time, two different kind of rhythms. Yeah, this bit I thought was cool as well. It was really kind of grungy. The the transition here. A slight uh, nitpick I would have here is that when they got into this section, if there'd been a bit more high end on the guitars, a bit more treble, it would have made it feel a bit bigger and a bit kind of uh, oddly grungier as well. Because if you add in that just a little bit, that sizzle, it can make the kind of low end seem even more kind of, I don't know, it's kind of grumbly and growly. And because the drums have gone to the toms, which are quite a kind of low uh, instrument in terms of where they sit in the, 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 if you imagine your low frequencies down here and your high ones up here, the toms are generally kind of lower frequency things. So there's a bit of high that's kind of missing here. So it sounds like they're kind of using the blues note a bit here. Double check that, it feels like it's a bit like that. So this is interesting, there's a tiny change here which makes it sound a bit more modern and a bit more edgy. Instead of going... Instead of going to that note, I think they're going up to this one instead. So again, I'm going to try and be as uh, non-theory heavy as possible, but this note is the blues note that comes from the blues. A thing to do in rock that band may do quite a lot, well, if I think of any songs that they do it and I'll link to them up there, is build a chord on it. So you get this kind of a little bit of, a little bit of edge from a little bit of dissonance. And it's very common when you're using the blues note to kind of use it as, as a passing note almost between this one and this one, which are in the regular scale. But instead of going to this one, they're opting to go to this note here, which is still in our scale. It's a C. There's an E minor by the sound of it. So it's in the scale, but using it in conjunction with the blues note in this way adds this kind of slightly more modern metal edge to it, slightly more contemporary, making it sound a bit less, you know, like classic rock or blues rock. So if you're wondering where that comes from, that would be my guess as to why it sounds a bit, a bit kind of fresher. Having said that, they might alternate between it. Let's double check. It's just a variation the second time. It's not, I don't think it's them replacing the, the SC with a B. And yeah, here, this is the thing they do quite a bit of where they put that cool uh, EQ on the vocals where the high pass filter, so it's allowing the highs to pass and knocking off the lows. There's also some really cool double tracking, so there's more than one vocal going on there. And a harmony, cool. So it sounds like they've added the high pass filter and maybe a bit of kind of overdrive or distortion to the vocal as well. Yeah, that's really cool. It's, it's, it's almost a shame they put so many ideas into the songs. That as a concept, that kind of uh, distorted high pass filter vocal, I, I could listen to a lot more of that. Um, like a full verse or a full chorus, even a more stripped down song that just kind of featured that. And as cool as it is that they chuck everything in the kitchen sink in, it would uh, be nice in a way if they kind of explored the, the ideas a bit more. 
which is a very unusual thing for me to see because normally like if i've heard something i'm kind of like well, I've, I've heard that i kind of want to hear something something a bit new so so credit to them <laughs> and advice to squeeze that opinion out of me cool um so many things where do we where do we begin where does one begin back to the octaves a more standard drum beat yeah and so there's a little bit here that i missed as well this is it blinking you'll miss it there's two trem pick notes It lasts for uh, two beats, so like a one bar of two, four, or a half a bar. Uh, try and picking the notes, so just picking them really quickly and doubling up by the vocals as well. Incredibly cool. And again, it's this cool thing that they do where it's that roller coaster metaphor of this like, you get the slight breath before you're kind of plummeting down. Cool, so this is, um, I really like the start of this when she comes in with the vocals. Something like that, really great hook. What they do here... This dun 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 dun. I've heard that in at least one of their songs before. Um, it might be uh, Don't You Tell Me, it might not be. Um, and it just is something that happens a lot when you write music, you end up using the same stuff because you really like it. It might be a chord progression, it might be a, a rhythm, it might be a rhythm and a mel melody. And it happens just through osmosis and zeitgeist stuff. Like there's a thing called uh, the millennial whoop, which is like going do 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 do. Where was it? Um... So it'd be over this chord, and you'd have someone going, and they'd normally be going, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. So something like, um, I think the first example I can think of is. Uh, the Rasmus in the Shadows, I think it was called. It was like, oh, oh, oh. There's some Kesha songs, I think, used it as well. It might be in a Katy Perry one, but it popped up everywhere for a while. And it's just, it just kind of sounded good, so lots of people used it. So there's nothing wrong with a bit of uh, self plagiarism, uh, but it's something that I've, you know, if I didn't point it out, I'd, I'd be doing a disservice because I have heard them use that, that rhythm before. Obviously, it's not exactly the same. There's a slight call and response where the vocals are kind of doubled and then it's down to just one. So it's changed up. It's not like a copy paste job or anything like that. And this is where, um, when I was listening to it the first time, I, this for me is where they've managed to take that kind of circus thing they do where it's manic and um, take just enough of it to put it in that it's uh, seasoning in. We we'll use a different metaphor. They're putting in a bit of smoked paprika. It's like <laughs> it's like when they put the oregano in the musical lasagna. This except this time, I think I'm making like I'm making like a kind of a circus ground burrito. Right? Oh, <laughs> the ones that you guys have to put up with. Uh, <laughs> so. There's just they've managed to take just enough of that um, kind of chromatic circus manic stylization and uh, kind of sanitize it to where it doesn't feel as all over the place and as sporadic and it's kind of like whoa but it's yeah i really like it is what i'm trying to say it's taking this kind of cool thing and uh, sanitizing it a bit so it's a bit more uh palatable you can kind of you could sneak this in to like a, a pop song type thing and you wouldn't really it wouldn't really come across as weird and I, I really like that when you manage to like um like a trojan horse of weirdness you know something like a dave brubeck's take five or maybe some of the passing chords and the, the boys are back in town or some of the stuff the police did where they take a kind of weird slightly jazzy thing and they managed to like sneak it in <laughs> to like regular music And those uh, unison stabs are just incredibly cool, I think. Uh, it's just great. Again, a great little... It's, I wouldn't say it's so much the transitions they do, but a lot of time it's sometimes the pre-transitions, so it's the bit before that lets you know something's going to happen. Yeah, it's played as well, slightly like... Um, almost kind of like slightly rushed or something to give it that, that kind of 
almost tripping up thing. It just sounds really cool. Back to that great drum beat. There's a huge sustained note there as well, nice. What's she up at? Up at an E, quite a high note to get. So like there, when I was talking about the high pass filter and the distortion, if they'd had that note sustained and then doubled it, or had a wee harmony, and just faded in some volume of the high pass distorted thing, that would have been incredibly cool. It's cool anyway, but now I'm just, I've been spoiled by that aesthetic on the vocals that I really like, that, that kind of tombro. I just want to hear it more. <laughs> cool, and this time, instead of doing something different with the melody like they did in the intro, right? They're just playing it for half the length. And a huge fill to help that transition as well. These drums, the, the, the compressed to everything out of them. It's, Yeah, it's so compression instead of something being really loud and really quiet, it's just kind of you normalize it a bit. And um, I think I've explained this before in one of the videos, so I'll link to that up there if I remember which one it is. And you, you can use it too much sometimes, so things sound really squashed. But here they, they've managed to compress them, so everything's very kind of um, sanitized again, very clean, very crisp. But they haven't kind of lost that oomph. There's still a kind of kick to them. Uh, just really quite like the drum sound on this. It's quite modern. It almost sounds like a, if you could get a, like an electric kit to sound a bit more human, something a bit like that, which I suppose is kind of what programmed drums are to some extent. But there's this sweet spot between stuff being programmed and stuff being human where it just sounds kind of cool. Uh, to me, it's, it's quite difficult to achieve though, so I'm really digging what they've what they've done here. This is really cool because I've got a kind of high pass filter on the guitar where it's all kind of scratchy. This lead one. And the drum fill was actually quite cool because it's basically like a final flash before the drums drop out. And then she's just doing wee diddles on the, the hi hat, I think. Time to think. And then these really weird kind of. Um, staggered fills where it's just like an odd timer like slightly swung it's um if, if it was a different if it was a different manner if this was the first song i'd heard i would have thought those were duff takes because i have played with drummers often drummers that played in jam bands and they don't really learn the songs properly and they do these weird fills where they're like that and it doesn't work but here it's clearly being composed and it it, it does work it's like an aesthetic choice in the song it's not done out of not bothering to learn things properly or, or not being able to play a fill in time out. It's done out of being like, you know, intention rather than by mistake, which is incredibly cool. Cool. That is quite an abrupt change there, actually, in hindsight, but I'm, I'm not going to complain about it. Yeah, it's stuff like that, even like a wee uh, pick spin. <laughs> In the previous beat, would kind of meld that together a bit more. That's the sort of thing I I end up nitpicking that far too much, and and um, when I'm recording and that sort of thing. Do they even fade in that vocal effect? I think they do a tiny bit. I think instead of coming in with a, a high pass all the way and distorted, they ride the distortion in a bit more. I think so. Or certainly when the vocals are doubled, the effect's getting uh, accentuated more. And we have that tiny two-bar pre-chorus as well. <laughs> Yeah, in general, I just really like the production on this. They could, could do it with a tiny bit more high end. Oh, having said that, I did have a sinus infection, so I'm still a little bit bunged up. So there might be tons of high end on this, and I'm just not hearing it properly. So hit me up in the comments if I'm talking rubbish. I 
And it, I think what's making it sound circusy is just that kind of dee 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 and the kind of half time drums. It's almost like the did 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 almost connecting to that, but not quite. Oh, that was cool. I hadn't caught that before. So they took that idea and then just expanded it and kind of reharmonized a bit. So instead of it just being once, the dun 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 dun. They've gone up and added in a kind of dissonant harmony on top. Yeah, cool. I don't know if I'd call that bass fill the first time either. So that's kind of the, the circus. Deedle deedle, everybody can start up an E. Yeah, so it's, it's this kind of thing of taking chromatics. It's, so chromatics without going, I said I wouldn't do this, but I can't resist it. <laughs> uh, instead of playing a scale like chromatics just means you're playing the notes in between that. Just playing all the notes. So here she's kind of taking four notes that are just one after the other and going down. What was it? Yeah, so you're basically taking this shape. So 15, 14, 13, 12, and you're just moving that down a semitone. So 14, 13, 12, 11, down again. And then down one final time. Just on that high E string. And the trick with this is to get the coordination so you're picking them at the same time. A trick you can use is if you pull it up. Practice pulling it up first. And then get your right hand to sync up. That can sometimes work. Um, that I started to get messy there because I was kind of not thinking about it enough talking over the top. But yeah, if you get that with the left hand, pick it kind of slowly. The thing I found recently as well is not anchoring that first finger because if you try to do that, it gets a bit sloppy. If you make sure it's not anchored, so that is it can kind of lift up. It tends to keep things a little bit smoother, particularly when you're doing a position shift. And before I forget, we are probably in... Oh, I've cut my finger. Oh, nice to cut my finger on my guitar strings there. Well, I've done that. I've never done that before. Maybe plaster or something. It's quite sore. Like a wee paper cut. Before I forget, if you like what I'm doing here, want to show support for the channel, or have a suggestion, make sure to hit up patreon.com forward slash JBF music. If you don't want to do that, if you hit subscribe, leave a comment and all that kind of great stuff. It's incredibly helpful for the channel as well. well let's get back to it. What's also kind of clever about that bit is it's almost like a precursor to the solo because I think we're getting a solo fairly soon. I think this bridge is just weird, isn't it? So again, there's that kind of swung drum beat. It kind of it sounds a bit like drunken. And then it kind of stabilizes to this more kind of uh, normal. It sounds like a flam. Sounds like she's hitting the drum kind of quickly twice. So flam's kind of when you hit a drum and then hit it again, just like a, a microsecond after. So instead of just like a douche, you get kind of like a douche. If I remember to do this, I will bring that up uh, an example of that. Now. And it's something that. Uh, you can often tell drums are programmed because they don't have these little human inflections that, that people do because a good drummer will just add this kind of stuff in because they know where to put it right, to make it sound good. It's just mental, isn't it? And then here, this is a bit I thought reminded me of like Tom Morello. Uh, what song is it? There's one. Do, 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 do. There's one song in particular where in the verse he's kind of doing like almost like a car alarm type sound. Um, I think it's on the first album. I forget which one it is, but it's reminded me of that where she's just doing this kind of same bend, and it's almost like it's a sample. Yep. Then into this kind of manic shred thing, and again this this. Uh, where are we? This move that she likes to do, I've heard that in three songs now. It was in the first time I heard it was Wonderland. Uh, Wonderland. I keep wanting to call it Winter Wonderland. The other one, 
Uh, it might have been. Don't you tell me, but I don't think it was. And here as well, and it's a cool move. You're going from a semitone and then going up a fifth from there. So here it was up at the 19th, the 20th frets on the B, up to the 22nd. Very kind of 80s, very kind of optimistic. A cool little move to put in. And again, that doubling effect, which will be our whatever whammy drop pedals, so you got the same sound and sound double up the octave. Oh, this is cool, right? So I don't think I paid enough attention to this before. We're getting a kind of sludgy calm response. So the little knock, 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 or whatever they're saying, and then the I forgot to put the lyrics on as well. Oh, there aren't lyrics. <laughs> That's fine. Um, and the hi hat too. Where are we? So you're like dun 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 more or less going on here and bam 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 ba da da And the drums locking in enough with the rhythm that it's all cohesive but then doing their own little bits here and there so it's not quite as stock like if everything's just going bam 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 it can sound a bit uh, a bit dated you know Cool, so what's happening is the bass is melding the, the two guitars together, I think. I, mean, I might be talking nonsense, I'll double check. No, okay, what's happening is they're all bump, 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 ba -do -do. On the, ba -do -do, the last two beats, they're all doing that same rhythm. So they're kind of doing, this guitar is doing its own thing, but then the rest of rhythm joins in with it, which is really cool. So instead of it just being like two worlds, they're kind of doing their own thing, which works, and then coming together and then doing their own thing. So you can hear in that final do 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 before it kind of the whole thing repeats. It's all kind of locking in. <laughs> Is that another two bar, um, two bar pre chorus there? Okay, that was like a it was like a two bar two bar pre chorus. They're just they're just slacking, aren't they? It's come to this point of the song, they've run out of ideas. They can't even do a a two bar bridge. They have to do a, a longer one. <laughs> it's just another idea from out of nowhere. It's cool, isn't it? Let it go, let it go. Try to do your best, something like that. Couldn't quite catch it, but just a nice little change, something we haven't heard before. Keeping it fresh again, which you don't really need to do in a three minute 40 song, but they've done it anyway. Drums going hard there. Kick drums really help and propel it. And again, we're going back to the kind of octaves. The kick drum, again, helping kind of propel things here. Cool, and this time they went back to the standard dun 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 that they did before instead of that kind of uh, doubled one. Doubled in length. And again, that sustained note. Cool, they just faded out that vocal really nicely. Great way to do it. And we've got a slight. Um, I think it's, I'm going to pop it back. Is this the same as the second part of the intro here? Yeah, cool. So uh, I think they're doing, yeah, kind of like before doing the first part and then the second part of the intro. Um, and a, a cool down to the vocals, and there's something ringing out here. I can't tell exactly what it is, but on the right side, there's this kind of like um, <laughs> sound going on. It sounds like they put a ton of reverb on something. You know, a uh, kind of scratchy record effect. Yeah, I'm not too sure what it is. It's maybe been uh, a snare that's been hit 
and they've just put a ton of reverb on it and made it a wee bit crackly. But it's cool because it's just under the vocals, I think. Yeah. It's just resting under the vocals and again it just pads out the song so it's not quite as dry as just having the vocals. Which sound pretty full in and of themselves to be fair, like how many are there? There's at least three. Uh they might have double tracked them more as well. But it just adds in a little a little extra thing. It's a bit like in the uh Don't You Tell Me solo trading but the live version where there's that very quiet bit of keyboard underneath which you don't necessarily notice first time or potentially ever, but it just adds a little bit more fullness, a little bit more sound to it. And as ever, a huge shout out and a massive thank you to the frankly awesome Rabbi Rams, Matt Hornsman, Glenn Kelly, Juan San, Stephen Williams, and Rebecca Hay. Cheers, guys. Okay, so uh, I'm going to try a few videos like this where it's less guitar, less theory, and try to talk about things a bit broader. So let me know <laughs> how that went, and I'll just keep adjusting things accordingly. The song you'd like me to check out, make sure to hit me up on Patreon. If you don't want to do that, you can click subscribe, check out these videos, leave a comment, and do all that fantastic stuff to help in the battle against the ever-mysterious changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. I take it easy, guys, and have a good one.